you know what I find are the best kinds of stories? The ones that you can actually gain the most from. They're the ones about personal, self-reflective growth. And I think that what we're looking at here today in this video is somewhat of an example of that. Because I saw this article here that was posted on Kaleva.fi, which is a subscription-based service journalistic platform that you need to subscribe to actually read their articles from. But I saw this article, and I saw the headline, I read it, and I thought to myself, you know, we talked about this with Leash Anderson and the New York Rangers. It's kind of appropriate to talk about it with Jesse Pulyarvi and the Edmonton Oilers, too. Take a look at this article here, published on June 9th by Jan Onella. The title says this, Still to Edmonton, Jesse Pulyarvi's position on a possible return of the Oilers has softened. Never say never. Jesse Pugliarvi is busting out the Justin Bieber for us here. Never say never. That's interesting to me. And in fact, it's very interesting because around this time a year ago, maybe a little bit less than a year ago, that was kind of the time where Jesse Pugliarvi went very, very public on what exactly it was he wanted out of his hockey playing career. Do you remember this, when Jesse Pugliarvi demanded a trade out of the Oilers, and where he threatened to play in Europe if he wasn't traded? Back then, Ken Holland was the new guy in town. It was no longer Peter Shirelli, it was Ken Holland, who had spent a very long time with the Detroit Red Wings, but since had come over to the oil town. And there was this quote, where Ken Holland told the media, he was like, you know, we hear him, yeah, we know he wants a trade, but at the same time, you know, we're not gonna trade him just because he asked for it. We're gonna wait, we're gonna stand our ground, and once a team actually offers us a price that we believe is necessary and sufficient for Polyarvi, that is when we're gonna trade him. Not now, not a week from now, not two weeks from now, just for the sake of trading him because he asked to be. We have the power here because we're the hockey team that controls his rights. And because Jesse Pugliarvi was not traded, he fulfilled his word. He yeeted over to Europe, he played with the Carpat in the SM Liga, and he was really good. One of the best players in that entire league. And a lot of people would say, yeah, you know, this guy does indeed have some legit hockey playing talent. He's 22, 23 years of age, He's still young, he's got chances here to break out as the NHL star that people thought he could be back when he was drafted in 2016. Might I remind you, there was a very legitimate party that did exist that said that Jesse Pugliarvi would be the best out of the two Finns in the 2016 draft. The other Finn in that draft was Patrick Laine. So, Jesse Pugliarvi has always had some sky-high potential and status, but the way things fell out this past season kinda makes things a little bit weird. So, to see this article here now, a year later, talking about how Pugliarvi is telling the Finnish media, you know, never say never, I could return to Edmonton. It's a very nice sign to me. And at the beginning, we talked about stories where you learn something, character growth stories that provide value and perspective to those watching. This could very well be an example of that. This could very well be an example of a player who recognizes how entitled he was being a year ago. A player who recognizes that maybe it wasn't just the Oilers not giving me an opportunity that was the reason that I didn't have success at the NHL, but because I myself had things to work on away from the puck, away from the arena, etc. Not saying that a year in Finland is going to change all that, but it certainly can. It certainly can have an impact. It certainly can allow somebody to take a step back and say, you know what? I want to open myself to the possibilities that maybe it wasn't just them being the bad guy. 
maybe I have things to improve on too. And when I read something like this where Polyarvi is saying, you know, never say never, it really makes me happy to see that. Because it does scream to me, yes, there has been some reflection here. Because the Polyarvi a year ago seemed so angry and so adamant on leaving Edmonton that he didn't really seem like a guy who, in my opinion, had any future in the blue and orange ever again. Trade me, or I'll go to Europe. And he goes over to Europe, and he does really well over there. Still not traded. The Oilers apparently won a first-round pick for this guy, which I don't know if any team is going to be willing to give that up. So maybe, maybe, the next time we see Pugliarvi on the ice in North America, it is indeed with the Edmonton Oilers, and it is indeed back with the team that drafted him in 2016 to be a very efficient two-way forward who does have some power forward-like capabilities, a big six-foot-four scorer who does have the ability to change the game on a dime and who can control things the same way he did at the World Juniors with Aho, with Laine, and with Ole Ulevi. This article was posted on the Edmonton Oilers subreddit, and a lot of the comments do kind of share the same sentiment that I'm trying to share over here. Take a look at this one. This is the top comment here from a user named Same Giar. Or maybe it's Sam Gear. I have no idea. Remember, we've all been young and dumb at some point. The difference is that we, or at least I, got to be young and stupid without cameras, a foreign country, a foreign language, tons of pressure, and a lot of people with influence and opinions on my decisions. The guy's still only 22. So, if he wants to come back and he wants to be given a second chance, what do the Oilers have to gain from rejecting that? If Pugliarvi comes back, let's say they use him in the playoff series against, or excuse me, the play-in series against the Chicago Blackhawks. What if they get the Jesse Pugliarvi that dominated the Finnish Liga, just under a point per game? What if they get that Pugliarvi? Now, I don't want to say it's likely, but what if? What if, on a stacked team with McDavid, Yamamoto, Dreisaitl, Nugent Hopkins, and all the other great forwards they have over there in Edmonton, they add somebody who was one of the best players in the country in Finland, and he continues at the pace that he was at before. He continues the dominance, and he controls the play like he did in Finland. All of a sudden, I don't think Patty Kane's got his money run out for him a little bit too easy now, doesn't he? The Edmonton Oilers were already somewhat the favorite to beat the Blackhawks, but now, if Jesse Pugliarvi opens himself up to the idea of coming back and potentially even playing in the play-in series, things could be pushed even more towards Edmonton's favor. So, what do you think about this? Do you want Pugliarvi to come back? Because... We talked about Reddit posts and Reddit comments. The next comment here says, from the aspiring chimp, I know this might be unpopular, but I don't want him back. Up his trade value as much as possible and get him out of here. I'm sure the chemistry in the room is already blasted already, and I think he's starting to realize that he can't hardball Ken Holland, and playing for the Oilers is his only ticket back to the NHL. That comment got 49 upvotes, so out of the several few people that were on Edmonton Oilers subreddit material over the past few hours, people agree. So, there is definitely a perspective that says that they don't want him back, because the pretentiousness and the value, all that stuff could be used towards getting another asset. But, as I alluded to at the beginning, this could be a very legitimate sign and an indicator of a story of self-growth. And I love seeing that. So, as a guy who loves seeing these self-reflection stories, who would I be to tell Jesse Pugliarvi, nah, screw off, stay in Europe, buddy. You didn't want to play with Edmonton back then? Oh, well, you can't play now. That personality is going to kick you and keep you out of this league. No, I don't want to do that. If a guy wants a second chance, give it to him. Especially when it comes to weird and somewhat immature decisions like what Jesse Pugliarvi decided to say all the way back in the summer of 2019 where he said, trade me or else I'll go to Europe. So comment down below what you think about this idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. So should I trust the 99 and bye. <laughs>